You probably watch a lot of tutorials that ask you to make everything clean, planned and detailed. Well, then this one is gonna be different, since some of the most creative effects were done by total accident or by destroying the sound. Just look at gated reverb, overdrive, that time when life nearly crashed caused a cool glitch, or feedback loop. Okay, so feedback loop is probably the most musical form to obliterate the sound. Just like with tape echo, where you can create lush ambiance, or with distortion to instantly put stack bass on. But it's not that you are restricted to pre-made effects. You can make feedback loops with anything you want. There are a few tutorials how to set it up in life, but here comes the first problem. The setup. It requires you to use return tracks, route them the right way, and while it's not rocket science, I made a simple drag and drop solution for you to just use it on your session and forget about routing. Once you drag it into your session, it gives you a little bit something like this. So let's use a simple drum loop and just drag it to audio track. In the second effects audio track, you have a rack to drop some effects here. And I actually prepared uh, some init patch here. So let's just drag it here. And as it says, it creates that watery effect. But I highly encourage you to make some of your own presets. So let's try to do something here. First, let's maybe add a delay or rather echo. Maybe include docking here. And to make it a little bit more spicy and interesting, let's turn off the sync inside this reverb and use maybe Max for Life envelope follower, drag it here and map it to delay time. Let's switch it to unipolar. Let's turn the feedback off actually. So important notice about working with feedback loops. You need to have some sort of safeguard here, but lucky you, I included it right here, which is basically a limiter after everything you put. And in a final track, the feedback one actually, you have an option to determine the amount. And we can turn down the volume of it as well. I really like what it does to the audio once I stop the playback. So if you work with feedback loops, once again, make sure to record everything. But as I used some Max for Life goodness inside my feedback loop group, it's hard not to mention a specified device, Max for Life one for Roar. So as you can hear, I used Roar to spice up the bass part from my mini freak. It gives that subtle rising effect, but I was too lazy to switch it to note mode and then automate it to different notes that this bass is actually playing. But that's where RR comes into play. So once I drag it before the roar, it gives us obviously a roar. But anyways, as you can see, it asked me to drag some MIDI notes here. So let's just use a drop MIDI part of this bass since it's fairly similar. And now once I change the input, it locks everything to note, which actually gives more tonal effect. And a little break from the feedback, since as we speaking about destroying sounds, it's hard not to mention failure. Okay, I never owned Honda Civic, but I believe each one of us heard this once or twice. So maybe having it on your master, it's not that great idea, but let me just try to spice up this Reese bass I made in current. Okay, so 
It's more of a cool effect to modulate your bass or spice it up rather than just have it on all the time, but in some cases I think it might do really really well. But I get it, sometimes you just want to have fun and don't think about mapping, routing and building racks. Some investments needs to be made, but then just watch this. I showed you Beam a couple of times in the past, and while at first it solved only granular needs, now when they added this vote thing, things got pretty interesting. So at first, it's just a cool distortion and saturation unit with fun animations, and some may ask who needs another distortion and saturation. Well, fair enough, but once you activate this feedback tab, Just as a quick reminder, Beam obviously has some built-in LFOs where you can basically go and map each parameter, change it to different shapes and so on. But if you want to do something in live with it, here is how to do it. So once you click this arrow on device menu, you have this option to assign some macros. So let's click this one, which is the frequency, the scatter. Now it's time to record our automation. But the real fun starts once you add different notes to it, and my favorite one to add for this particular effect is the time one. Let's just shuffle. You know, while it sounds cool, I believe that using this drum loop all the time won't be a great idea, so that's why we can make another node, which is a dry one. Then inside beam, let's put the volume of this node down. Or what I've actually done to this track, little accent, but it makes a difference. I mentioned it earlier, but another cool thing to work with feedback loops like that is to actually create a new audio track, turn it into resampling mode, then activate record, and while we solo the drums and play with beam, so I believe this will override the automations we've made, but who cares, let's uh, try to do something different. And recording feedback loops like that can create some real happy accident. And since we are in audio, we can obviously change the two different warp modes and uh, edit the audio the way we want. But that's another story. Luckily for you, I have another video for that.